Welcome back to The Bible Says What? Today I will summarize Matthew chapter 20, where Jesus described what the kingdom of heaven is like, where he once again told his disciples about his upcoming crucifixion and resurrection, and where Jesus healed two blind men. Jesus described the kingdom of heaven. He said, the kingdom of heaven can be partially understood with the following parable. A landowner went out at six in the morning to find people to work in his vineyard. The workers agreed that one day's pay would be enough for payment. They went to work. At nine in the morning, noon, and three in the afternoon, he did the same thing and told the workers he would pay them what was right. At five in the afternoon, the landowner walked through the marketplace and saw people standing around. He said, why have you been idle all day long? They said to him, no one hired us for anything. He said, you two go into my vineyard and work. And they went. One hour later at six in the evening, the landowner told his foreman, Call everyone in the vineyard over here to get their pay, starting with the last to arrive and ending with the first to arrive. The workers arrived to receive their pay. The workers who only worked one hour received a whole day's pay. On down the line, the workers received the same pay. Finally, the workers who worked all day since six in the morning arrived thinking they would get more than everyone else. But they received one day's pay as well. They grumbled at the landowner and thought he was unfair. They said, we worked for 12 hours in the hot sun and you paid us the same as the men who only worked one hour. Isn't that unfair? The landowner said, no, it is not unfair. Did we not agree before you started how much I would pay you? Are you greedy because I am generous? I can do whatever I like with my own property. I want to pay them as much as I pay you. And I made a decree that the last shall be first and the first will be last. After Jesus said this, James, John, and their mother bowed down before Jesus and their mother made a request. She said, please command that my two sons sit on your right and left side when you rule in the kingdom of heaven. Jesus said, you do not know what you are asking for. Your request has been denied. The father has prepared those two places of honor for his chosen. All the other disciples after hearing this were disgusted. Jesus called them all to himself after recognizing another teaching moment. He said, you know the rulers of the Gentiles lorded over them, and their great men exercised dominion over them. But you must not do this in my kingdom. Whoever wants to be great in my kingdom will be a servant, and whoever wants to be first among you shall be your slave. Just like I came not to be served, but to serve and to give my life as a ransom for many. Speaking of that ransom, now is a good time to remind you what I explained earlier. It is soon time for me to be delivered up to the chief priests and scribes, and they will condemn me to death. They will hand me over to the Romans, who will mock, whip, and crucify me but I will be resurrected from the dead after three days. Jesus and his disciples left Jericho, and as they walked down the road, two blind men heard them passing by. They cried out in a loud voice, Lord, have mercy on us, son of David. The crowd told the men to be quiet, but they refused and yelled even louder. Jesus heard them and he walked up to them. He asked them, what do you want me to do for you? They answered, Lord, have mercy on us. We want our eyes to be opened. We want to see. Jesus, moved with compassion, touched their eyes. Immediately they regained their sight and they followed him.
The most important verses in this chapter are Matthew 20 verses 16 through 19, which state, So the last shall be first, and the first shall be last. For many be called, but few chosen. And Jesus, going up to Jerusalem, took the twelve disciples apart in the way, and said unto them, Behold, we go up to Jerusalem, and the Son of Man shall be betrayed unto the chief priests and unto the scribes, and they shall condemn him to death, and shall deliver him to the Gentiles to mock and to scourge and to crucify him, and the third day he shall rise again. The thing I think the Lord wants us to understand after reading this chapter is that He will reward Christians as He sees fit. Like the parable of the landowner paying his workers reflects. He wants us to see that the Father has prepared places of honor at Jesus' right and left hand for people He has chosen. God wants us to see that His way of thinking is opposite of the world's way. Whoever wants to be a leader and a chief must be a servant to all, and they must not lord their authority over anyone. The Lord wants us to see that Jesus prophesied about his crucifixion, death, and resurrection many times, and repeatedly told his disciples about this. But they could not understand what he was talking about until the Holy Spirit gave them wisdom after Jesus' resurrection. They still thought he was an army commander who would conquer the Roman armies. And God wants us to see that Jesus healed blind men after they told Jesus specifically what they wanted. He wants us to make specific prayer requests to him as well. Would you be upset with the Lord if he gave someone else the same blessings that he gave you, even though you thought you worked harder for it? Doesn't God have every right to give whatever he wants, whenever he wants? Shouldn't we all just be astonished that he shed his grace on us? Indeed we should. We don't work hard to earn anything in God's kingdom. It's all grace. Perhaps you are not even a child of God yet, and you have not experienced God's grace personally. Perhaps today will be the day that you will. Humble yourself before the Lord and repent for your sin. Turn to the Lord for salvation. Jesus humbled himself and died on a cross as my substitute and your substitute, and the Father raised Jesus from the dead. Jesus conquered hell and death, and he is coming back soon. God said that if you confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord, and if you believe in your heart that the Father raised Jesus from the dead, you would be saved. Why don't you place your faith in Jesus right now? And thanks for watching the Matthew chapter 20 episode. If you enjoyed it, please share it with someone. If you want to join me on this long video journey, feel free to subscribe to the channel. See you next time.